This is iFiber One News. Here are today's top stories. The Moses Lake School District is paying $22,000 to the city to get the school zone warning lights working again. Two Moses Lake residents raise concerns about changing the rules for vegetation on vacant lots. Quincy Soccer was blown out Tuesday night as Ellensburg racked up 13 goals in their shutout win. From the iFiber One newsroom, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. The Moses Lake School District is paying $22,000 to the city to get the school zone warning lights working again. JSF Technologies notified the city in March of 2015 the warning lights, which use a 2G wireless network, were going to be rendered obsolete. The British Columbia-based company provided the initial warning light signs and now uses a 4G network. Public Works Superintendent Mike Morrow said the city does not have the money in its 2016 budget to pay for upgrading the system. The city is paying the initial cost for the upgrade and the district is expected to pay them back. When the work is finished, the school district will be responsible for the signs. School District Superintendent Michelle Price said the district is paying the $22,000 to the city from the district's general fund. Morrow anticipates the signs being received and installed in October. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. Two Moses Lake residents raise concerns about changing the rules for vegetation on vacant lots. The City Council is examining whether to change its rules concerning vegetation. City code prohibits any grasses or weeds taller than a foot on lots with buildings. If the lot is vacant and has a sidewalk, property owners need to cut the weeds and grasses 10 feet from the sidewalk. If the lot is vacant and doesn't have a sidewalk, the weeds and grasses don't need to be cut. Councilmember Bill Ekrit supports increasing the restrictions so the city is more attractive. Moses Lake resident Rod Davis told the council several areas in the city have problems with weeds, and he was concerned the city's code enforcement officer wasn't getting to enough places. Davis said he did want to remove the exception for vacant properties without sidewalks by adding 10 feet back from the road. He didn't support requiring all properties to be mowed to the ground because it would increase dust and pollen. Chuck Perry, a Moses Lake resident, said he opposed further regulations on vacant land, adding the change could lead to other species. Perry said increasing the area affected by the ordinance would increase the amount of money spent by the city to enforce the new rules. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. Quincy Soccer was blown out Tuesday night as Ellensburg racked up 13 goals in their shutout win. Ellensburg was on the board less than 10 minutes into the game and added eight more goals to take a 9-0 lead in halftime. The Bulldogs added four more goals in the second half and easily left Quincy with a 13-0 route. Ellensburg had five players each score two goals in the game. The Jackrabbits managed just two shots on goal, including a blocked penalty shot in the first half from Alicia Donovan. Quincy's record falls to 1-2 and two as the team heads to Grandview on Saturday for a 10 a.m. match. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One Sports. Boy, with football season starting and everything getting underway, I thought fall was in the air for sure. Hi, Jeff Slakey from the iFiber One Weather Center, taking a look at this week's forecast. 75 and partly cloudy for your Monday, and then we just warm up from there. 78 clear on Tuesday, 82 on Wednesday, 83 on Thursday, and mid-80s for both Friday and Saturday. To find out how fiber can impact your life, check iFiber.tv. For iFiber One News, I'm Jeff Slakey. This is iFiber One News. For more information on these stories and other news, visit us online at iFiberOne.com or check us out on Facebook.